Welcome back once again. Last time we talked about the anatomy of a Lexi, LexD application in a self-hosted environment. And we discovered that it was basically like installing an application from the command line on a bare metal host. This time we're going to take a little bit different angle and we're going to talk about Lexi, LexD versus Docker. Which one is actually better? Well, use the right tool for the right job. Docker is a completely virtual installation of an application that can be started with a single command. Docker is not persistent. Only mounted file folders are persistent. Docker containers are never upgraded. They are replaced. LexC LexD is a virtual OS instance that can be used to install any application. And LexC LexD uses the kernel of the host and the host services. Unlike a virtual machine, Lexi LexD does not virtualize the hardware. So networking with containers. Both Lexi and LexD can use NAT networks. So this is a screenshot from my QNAP container station, what they call network and virtual switch display. And you can see in this display that there is a container network that's called Docker Zero that is a NAT network. It's running at 10.0.5. whatever. And uh, there is a container network for LexC, which is LexC BR0, and it's running at 10.0.3.1. And you can see that off to the right hand side here, they don't really seem to go to a physical adapter, and that's because exposing those containers from the NAT is purely a choice of the individual implementation of the container. So Docker likes to leverage NAT by default. The port section of a Docker Compose YAML file or the uh, Docker run command line. So here's an example of uh, the YAML file. And here's an example of a Docker run command line, just excerpts from both of those. The port number to the left of the colon is the port number to expose outside the Docker NAT network. You may change it to any port number that the Docker host is not using. The port number to the right of the colon is the port number that's actually used inside the Docker NAT and actually used by the application code. Never change it or else you're going to break the application when you're trying to deploy it. Both Lexi and Docker can use NAT. It's more common to see Docker use NAT and for Lexi, LexD to bridge to the host network. So Docker Docker volumes must mount persistent volumes. And folders inside of a Docker volume do not store persistent data, as I mentioned earlier, between restarts of the container. So when you restart a Docker container, if it's not mounting any data outside and it has persistent data, that data is lost. Instead, the volumes director in Docker compose or the dash V in the Docker run command line can mount persistent storage outside of the Docker container itself. So here's an example of what it looks like with a Docker compose. Here's an example of what it looks like with a Docker run. So the value to the left of the colon is the folder outside of the Docker container on your Docker host. So in this particular case, a lot of times when you look at these um, uh, documentation for Docker containers, they'll say things like slash path, slash two, slash app data, just showing you that's, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to change this path to pointing to wherever you want on your host to store the data. And inside the container, that's simply called slash config. So right. The value to the right of the colon is the name of the folder or mount point that's referenced in the Docker container, and it cannot be changed. So 
what are some Docker container generalities? Well, Docker downloads an image from the Docker hub at https hub.docker.com. The image has to reside on your local machine where Docker is running for as long as you have a Docker container that is using that image. An image is downloaded and a container instance is creating user using either that docker compose command or the docker run command. A docker compose command requires a docker-compose.yaml or a docker-compose.yaml in the same folder where the docker compose command is executed. So what are the downsides to docker? Well, you have to completely destroy and recreate a Docker container to upgrade to a newer version of an application. Persistent data must be externally mounted, as we discussed. And then sometimes containers get or container images get orphaned having no current container that references them. An example is you create a container and later you go bring the container back down or delete it but the actual image that created the container is still cluttering up your system if you don't need it. So read carefully. Often Docker containers have dependencies on other Docker containers, especially database instances, which might not be part of the author's Docker container. So, you know, if you read out there, a lot of times they'll say, hey, this relies on an external um, uh, my SQL instance, and uh, it's going to expect the following from that database. And they may ask for a database location and a database uh, username and password. So that's what I'm talking about. So what are the upsides to Docker? Well, they're simple and easy to run since an entire application is complete inside of the container. The author creates this thing to be highly portable and easy to run. So here's an example of a Docker YAML file and a Docker CLI with the run command. So there's a Docker YAML file. And I want to point out that you see all this indentation. That's another thing. Uh, new Docker users will frequently have problems because they won't get the indentation right. Spacing and blank spaces and tabs are extremely important in a YAML file. If they are not in the right place, they will result in a syntax error. And then the docker run command, which is simply a command line to go run your Docker container. And I might point out also that both of these can be run kind of real time to see if the container uh, deploys correctly. And then they both have the ability, the Docker Compose has a dash D, um, which means detach. And the docker run has a, dot, a dash D, which means detach. And a detach process will be one that runs... Uh, independent of the terminal where you started it and also it will automatically start on the next reboot of the docker host as long as the restart is set <laughs> so what are some lexc lexd generalities well lexc lexd is an image of a linux os not an image of an application a container image is downloaded rather than an OS being installed from an ISO. So like in the case of a virtual machine, you'll download an ISO and do an installation of the operating system just like you would do an installation of an operating system on a bare metal machine. Containers don't work that way. You download the OS image and it is instantly available and instantly running. So LexC LexD is not just an OS. So, or uh, rather, it is just an OS, so that all applications must be installed from scratch as they would be on a bare metal machine. So, LexC and LexD can use NAT also, but more commonly is bridged to a LAN. And they appear to be uh, regular machines, just like virtual machines or bare metal machines would be. So, LexD. Lexi LexD containers can be upgraded. Unlike Docker, you can upgrade the operating system in them 
uh, you can upgrade the applications in them. I actually created a Lexd container one time or Lexc container one time uh, in Ubuntu 1804 and I upgraded it to Ubuntu 2004 just to see if it could be done and it worked fine. So what are the downsides to Lexc Lexd? Well, you have to install the entire application and all dependencies just as though you were on a bare metal machine. It's not like Docker where you download, you just run the container and everything is up and running. So nothing is pre-built except the OS. And for that reason, I would say consider creating templates. In the previous video, we talked about a Lexi container that might have a LAMP uh, template pre-installed LAMP template. So Lexi, Lexi didn't container share the kernel of the host machine. If the host kernel is missing a required feature, Lexi, Lexd may not work for you. So I've seen older kernels that don't support C groups, um, even fairly new kernels that don't support WireGuard. So if you need a capability in the kernel, um, you're going to have to either, uh, if, if it's not in the kernel of your host machine, you'll either have to find a way to upgrade that kernel uh, of the host before you create your container that needs that requirement, or you're going to end up installing uh, on a virtual machine, which makes the kernel in software. So Lexi command line interface is more complex than Lexd. Consider managing Lexc and Lexd with Proxmox or QNAP Container Station or even VMware. So what are the upsides to Lexc, Lexd? Well, it works like a virtual machine. It's faster and leaner than a virtual machine because no hardware virtualization. And it's not as resource intensive because generally you're setting caps for resources like memory and CPU as opposed to carving a, a piece of the host machine out that's reserved for a virtual machine. And Lexi Lexd lets you install and upgrade any application from scratch, just like on a physical machine. So in summary, <clears throat> again, as we started out with, pick the right tool for the right job. Docker containers are easy to deploy, but consider the requirements required with upgrades. And Lexc, Lexd require installing the app and all dependencies just like on a virtual machine. And both Lexc and Lexd and Docker are containers and they both provide much leaner virtualization than virtual machines. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening today, and please subscribe and like if you like what you see, and we will see you next time.